Hey, welcome back. I was sitting at my desk the other day thinking up uh, innovative ideas for the coming decade, like uh, MacArthur Mediocrity Grants or relocating AIG offices to Guantanamo or maybe AIDS awareness seminars for the Pope. I don't use condoms, so why should Africa? Oh, wait. I'm sorry, that was my godfather. I, I don't really have a Pope, but he's German, right? So I can work on it? All right. Okay, anyway, so my mind started wondering, and I, and, I, and I thought back that morning to the sound the newspaper didn't make when, uh, when we woke up, when it was tossed into our yard. What used to wake us up with the thud of a small futon falling off the back of a truck now whistles through the air like an empty Slurpee cup, landing noiselessly. The Washington Post, our local paper, one of the most influential newspapers in the nation, barely makes an impression on my grass lying there like a discarded half-smoke somebody backed over in a parking lot. The difference, is, of course, is that half-smokes haven't cut their staff or trimmed their pages or reduced their award-winning business and book sections to less space in the daily advice columns that they have. Of course, I understand why newspapers have to downsize these days, given that the only remaining advertisers are cell phone companies promoting technologies for families to stay connected, even though the teenagers would gladly pay extra not to. Then you got your banks, touting their strong balance sheets and continued commitment to fiduciary responsibility shortly before they're taken over by the federal government, and oil companies promoting their decades-long commitment to the environment and wondering why we haven't noticed. As a former staff member of the now bankrupt Chicago Sun-Times, where I worked in the years before God, apparently on a whim, called me to leave that job and work for Sojourners, I have a keen interest in the survival of print journalism, if for no other reason that I can't afford to spread out Kindles on the floor for the new puppy. But after considerable thought, I've devised a new business plan for newspapers, one that replaces the outdated commitment to objectivity with the more lucrative innovation of product placement. Since most news events occur in the presence of consumer products, it wouldn't be that much of a stretch. Here's a couple of articles, for example, that you could, you could see in that new format. A three-alarm fire that gutted a warehouse in Midtown could have been avoided, according to city fire officials, if the owner had simply installed First Alert's SA340 smoke detector, now with dual ionization. There's just no excuse, admonished an official who requested not to be identified, a pleasant delusion considering he was wearing a becoming Marc Jacobs twill trench coat from Nordstrom's. After all, these devices are on sale at area Home Depot stores for only $12.19. An investigation by this newspaper confirmed the sale continues to the weekend. See, that's just one example. Here's another one. An area man was slightly injured yesterday when he lost control of his 2009 Honda SRV, now available with sunroof and heated outside windows, uh, mirrors, and careened into a telephone pole. Police at the scene reported that the driver had been distracted by texting on his new BlackBerry Storm 9530, the top of the line of the BlackBerry series, starting at $129.99. He had just purchased at the downtown Verizon store, open from 10 to 8 Monday through Saturdays. The driver's minor facial lacerations were treated with Band-Aid bandages, and his car was taken by Jack's stop and tow to an unnamed local repair shop. By the way, if the repair shop wishes to be named in subsequent news reports, please contact our advertising department. And it's not just the economic downturn that is hurting newspapers. Electronic media have created a 24-hour news cycle such that newspapers might as well change their names to stuff you already heard on NPR, not to mention the growing generational divide. Most young people get their important news, such as how the recession is affecting the Jones brothers, through their cell phones. These days, they only, use, they only use newspapers to roll up and swat their parents away from the landlines. I recently encountered this changing media environment when a young person asked if I Twittered. I thought about it for a minute, and then I replied, no, but, but I dribble a little bit, mainly at night. This seemed to confuse her, but when I attempted to explain myself, she threatened me with a rolled-up newspaper. 